Um, so by that, I want to tell you a little bit about quality assurance and quality controls in metabolomics, which is uh, quite important, as you can see, when you have a, a big bank, biobank, as we saw before, then it's important to run some kind of uh, quality assurance and quality control systems. So why would we use that? It's ultimately, by the end of the day, we want to have a, a very nice study and we want to demonstrate it's of high quality so it can benefit as many in the community as possible. You don't want to, to report a, a, a low quality uh, study. So, so it's important to have some good, some good uh, quality control uh, and quality assurance uh, systems in, in place. And finally, you also want to, at the end of the day, you want to share the data in repositories maybe, and Justin will come back and talk about that later today. And uh, and then many times uh, today, publications, journals, you have to report your study in the end. Then you also have to provide some kind of uh, a description of what quality assurance and what uh, quality controls measures you have been using in your study. So, and after my talk, I will uh, introduce this uh, this topic uh, to all of you. And then after my talk, uh, Morten uh, Danielson from NSOMIS will come in and show that it how it works in in real life from a company side. Um, so, uh, QA and QC is is under the umbrella called the quality management system. And uh, there are some uh, quality controls that are happening uh, just before analysis. That could be uh, something about study design descriptions. Is there any sample hand handling and study uh, startups, uh, sample storage uh, uh, descriptions, sample tracking, and so on? Um, and then during analysis, there's also uh, quality control checks. Um, normally before we we use our systems, we do system suitability checks. We have uh, in studies, we typically have blanks. And uh, that's also in the study we are going to work with the next couple of days. There's some, some blanks. Maybe there's some uh, descriptions of internal standards uh, in the study also, or you're adding that you want to follow. And uh, and then there could be a full matrix of, of uh, QC samples that we will get back to in a, in a few moments. Um, then there could be after data acquisition, then there could be uh, something about data storage and archiving. Uh, it's a very good idea to, to have that in place and some descriptions of it. How are you going to do the data review? Are there any quality checks? Are there any extra? Uh, extra persons that are looking into the data and, and are getting the same results. Maybe you're using a PCA for checking for outliers. Uh, there are some descriptions about how to, to annotate and identify the metabolites. And there's uh, some ac acceptance criteria for filtering and so on. And maybe there's also this one from the proof QC samples. Maybe you review if there's high variation of the, this QC sample of a certain metabolite, then maybe you would reject that metabolite for filler studies because maybe it's it's uh, only present in very few samples, or maybe there's a very high variation between the, the pool sample injections. Um, and then you have the quality assurance system, and we looked a little bit more into that, and that's happening before uh, any analysis, where it, it's uh, standard operation procedures, and uh, up here we cannot see, but it could be monitoring of temperatures in the room, power failure, and so on of the instruments. That's a very good uh, thing to have these uh, locks. So everything is typically entered in the logbook of the instruments. And the instruments are, of course, following some kind of a maintenance schedule and how often are we calibrating the mass spec and so on. That should all be in, within the quality assurance uh, systems. And documentation and audit trails. So if there's any changes to the standard operation procedures, or if any 
samples are undergoing another procedure than all of the other samples, then you could document it in such a, such a thing. And if we then jump into uh, about data storage and, and repositories, then it would be a good idea to think about like when you acquire the data, how are, how are the data going out to the, the, the clients or the driver, the person that are working on, on the data? Um, so in, in our lab, we are using a, a network uh, a network based approach where all the data are being stored on one computer and then afterwards we are copying it to network drives where there's a, a mirror of the data quite soon after and then the, the client can enter that data and then uh, after uh, after the data analysis we can also put it in, in an archive where it can be stored for, for many years so if you are involved in the Horizon projects, for instance, then you are requested by, by law that you have to store the data for at least seven years after the project has ended. So and that's typically what we do. We place everything in an archive when, uh, when the data is analysis is finished. And then there's a lot of repositories that, that Justin will, will talk about and how to share it uh, with, the, with everyone. So, uh, the quality control, it's something that we do uh, during or after the analysis. And one of the things was the suitability test. So it, it will demonstrate the, if the platform is, is good enough. And uh, what we typically do in our lab is that we have a, a standard that has been spiked into a matrix with at least 50 different uh, components, metabolites or pharmaceuticals. And then we run that on the platform and then we check if the retention times are good enough, the mass accuracy is good enough, and so on. The intensity of the samples, uh, intensity of the metabolites, and if it's that is if it's good enough, then uh, then uh, the platform is is okay to use. Then there's something about this uh, QC pool um, where the, it has several uh, several purposes. One thing is to conditioning the analytical system. The other thing is to look into the reproducibility of all the injections that you do in the in the, in the study. And it, it's also to monitor and correct for systematic errors. So we can normalize our data after this. Uh, and I will come back to an example of that. And then we can also filter the variables, all the metabolites and intensities according to this uh, this uh, this uh, pool QC. And then uh, we could also use it in a, in a dilution study, and maybe some people are already doing that here, uh, where we, we want to, if we want to compare sample groups, then maybe uh, it's a good idea to know if, the, the, to demonstrate if you have uh, um, a metabolite that is high, half in intensity, then it should also be the fifth half of the concentration. And you will do that in a dilution study where we typically take this full sample, and we diluted a factor of two, a factor of four, and so on. And then we hopefully see some kind of a linear relationship uh, of the signal. Then there's uh, process blanks, a procedural blanks, or pro process uh, blinds. It's uh, very important um, to maybe there's uh, things you introduce during your sample prep or handling of samples, then you can, can filter out this signal. Uh, from this sample and then you have uh, maybe a QC spike sample also where you uh, you fortify the, the the pool sample with the with some metabolites to confirm the identity of metabolites and then we have uh, long-term with reference materials if you want to to normalize across batches or bridge data sets then it's a very good idea and there's an example here where um, this uh, longer re term reference uh, material has been injected every of all the red injections here. And this is for us, uh, a single metabolite, you would say. And this is the second batch where it's the same sample that's been injected and the third one. And then you can simply normalize this data and, uh, and use uh, the, all of the data in a study. 
Um, then finally, I just have an example here of a sample sequence. What is uh, what we typically do? Um, typically, we use uh, solvent planks first on the platform, and then we use this system solubility check, and then we use the solvent blank again and a process blank. And uh, and then we start injecting uh, quality controls to condition in the system because there could be active sites on the color uh, chromatographic columns and so on that needs to be saturated. So uh, so we are we are conditioning the system by that. And after that, uh, we typically run a sample with uh, with DDA as we heard this morning from Daniel and Farina. Uh, uh, where we are, we are fragmenting uh, all the metabolites to get uh, data for annotation. Um, and all of the other samples are basically recorded in just in full scan mode with this strategy. And then we go into uh, all the samples. Uh, this is in randomized order, of course, and, uh, and it's kind of balanced. Um, for instance, if this study is about uh, looking into uh, some kind of uh, diseases and, and you have like 50% female and 50% men in the study, you want to balance so, uh, so, so you don't have overweight of men in this group or females. So you, you balance it out so you have 50% of each in, the, in these groups. And then uh, after the samples has been injected, then we continue with a quality control and another block of samples and a quality control and another block of samples, quality control again. And this is what we can see here on this uh, plot here. So the blue dots are quality controls and the yellow dots are samples. And this is the intensity plot for a single metabolite in a study where it maybe contains thousands of metabolites. And as you can see here, there's uh, a drift of the instrument, a performance of the instrument. And uh, when we do this, then uh, this QC should give the same signal in all, in all injections, but it does not because the system will be uh, will go down in performance typically. So we uh, can normalize this later on with the data analysis. And then, uh, then we finish up with some more identification only uh, injections of the pool QCs and maybe a process blank and a solvent blank to check carryover. And then a system solubility test again. Um, and this is an example up here of a system solubility uh, test we did in the beginning of the analytical sequence. A very uh, nice and beautiful chromatogram with a lot of peaks, and this is what happened in the end. So, so this does start look so good. So basically, we had to to do something: uh, clean the instrument, change the sample prep to get to get the same signal again. Because you can see here when you compare these two chromatograms, they are completely different. And uh, and we had to yeah change sample parameters and uh, and and then restart the sequence again. So yeah, any questions about the QAQC for now? Yeah. What uh, what microphone platform did you run this on? And is the drift you see here translatable to different platforms? Uh, so this uh, this picture here is an example from a, a paper I referenced down here, and the chromatograms are not associated with this this exactly this figure here, but the chromatograms are from a, a nano LC uh, chromatograph. We have hyphenated to an ultra in our lab. So but we typically see this that you have a very good signal in the beginning, and then it goes down in performance across, I don't know, 50 injections or something like that. Yeah. You see the similar effect also in different platforms? Yeah, it's a typical effect you see, yeah. And then uh, you have to change your strategy a bit, a little bit. Maybe you need to do more sample cleanup. Maybe you even have to dilute your samples sometimes. Uh, use, use less material, yeah. Um, how do you decide uh, 
push task to balance in your group. Uh, then again, when you try to balance uh, man and woman, but you could also decide to balance for older people, younger people, or even you know, even if it's not bad from different regions, but uh, yeah, how do you decide? Well, it depends a little bit on, on your study design, I would say. Uh, and hopefully you know what to study before you just go completely untargeted. But uh, maybe this is a controlled animal study with uh, different treatment groups of a, of a drug that has been tested. Then you have to kind of balance the different, uh, the different uh, groups here in the, in the different uh, brackets here of samples. So, so don't run like all females or all in the high dose in, in one end of the, of, the, of the study, because maybe you, you have a situation where you have a very good signal in the beginning and then a low signal in the end, and then you end up drawing the wrong conclusions. Maybe. Yeah. So, randomization uh, already prevented if you have a Yeah, but, uh, but it doesn't all the time when you run a random function. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why we use this uh, balancing or bracketing function. And we typically run this uh, pool quality control every four to six, eight samples or something like that. It's depending on, on the size of the study. Okay. Yeah. The quality control needs need to be different from the sample itself or it needs to be similar? Yes. Yeah. The quality control could, could be any sample, but typically, if you want to do it in a in a good way, it's typically a pool sample of the study. So you take a little bit of all the samples into a pool, and you could do that on the sample level before extraction, or you could do it after extraction. Okay. Five samples separated within each group is that is arbitrary, or is it just like I can do it like ten or five or even what is the it depends on your on your size of your study, but typically it's every four to six to eight samples when you have a quality control. Um yeah. NIST uh I didn't know NIST had a quality control uh, uh sample. NIST is typically uh a library, or, or is it also a, yeah. Okay, yeah, a standard reference material, yes. Yeah, you can do that, um, yeah. So the NIST standard reference material is uh, is typically from a human uh, biological sample. Um, uh, normally, yeah, we don't use uh, human samples that often, but the, uh, but we may be uh, looking into zebrafish or daphnia, and, and then we have to make our own material from all the samples. Then we take a little bit of everything and combine them to a pool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I would. Ask Morton Danielson to to come forward, and, and then we just switch uh, presentations here.